Bush and austerity. We are the party of people. Polyev is set to get his first shot at a vote of no confidence in the Liberal government as soon as next week. Let's talk about it. Well, it looks as though the big day we've all been waiting for for years and years and years, seemingly endless years, might be coming around sooner than we think. I strongly believe this time we have a bona fide chance of seeing an early election come to fruition. In just a few days, the Trudeau government is allowing the Conservatives to table a motion in which the Conservatives are expected to phrase it as that the House has lost confidence in the government. There will be no mention of a carbon tax from what I've come to understand, from what I've been seeing. It's just strictly going to be that, that the House has lost confidence in government. My hopes are high for two reasons. I've been watching all of the political parties closely and they all seem to be going into election mode with the Liberals being the uh, only stalwarts. But Jugmeet definitely seems to have a fire in his belly all of a sudden. He tried to start that fake fight, so he's got that false aggression going on. He's also, you can tell that he's riding a bit of a high for having retained his seat in Elmore which really should not have been a big deal because this is a dynasty seat. So if they had lost that, they should be very embarrassed, but they retain it. He's excited. Same thing with the Bloc Québécois. They're very excited about stealing a seat from the Liberals in La Salle, which they should be. That was a Liberal stronghold. And another sign that Trudeau truly is an absolutely toxic POS. I mean, if you saw yesterday's video, and if you haven't, I recommend you go and watch it. I did that replay of his strut, but my version is better because because I use the Vince McMahon entry music just to uh, add a little bit of drama and gusto, shall we say. So now the question is, will Jugmeat prop up the liberals or not? That is the big question. So as a quick aside to that, I just want to bring up that almost fight that Jugmeat had. Let's face it, it really wasn't going to materialize to anything to begin with. But you have some liberal commentators trying to run game saying that in the case of Tom Parkin, far right bully chicken can confronted by Singh today was partying with Polyev MP last night and with group of flying flags. I'm looking at the picture right now and I do not see anyone from that so-called far right group that was there. I don't consider right blend a far right dude by any stretch, but even if he was, for the record, he's not the guy who was part of that party that accosted Jag Me. Then you have one of my favorites on Twitter, Jeet Sidhu. This guy's always got bargain basement welfare grade takes on every situation. If you look at this, the fact that he's trying to characterize Jugmeat having any type of leverage over grocery store owners is hilarious. I, I, I don't know where these guys, what kind of universe they live in. It's definitely not the same universe we live in. Jugmeat, for the record, has not accomplished anything in his fight against bringing grocery store prices down. If he truly wants to accomplish something in that area, he might want to have a talk with his brother, who not enough people mention, happens to be a lobbyist for Metro. Hmm. Moving on. If there's one thing we definitely won't miss, should we get an early election and rid ourselves of Trudeau a year earlier than we should, it will be the housing crisis that he's had a large hand in creating. I just came across a video recently and I find this to be a heartwarming video. We need more of those these days. So I'm going to play it for you. And here we go. Take a look, please. Why is it so cute? Honey, home looks you. This is a mansion for her. Go in, please. Take a look. Go inside. Go oh in. my god. Go inside. I'll show you around. Holy smoky macaroni and cheese. If somebody can do that for the homeless people, this world would be awesome. Are you gonna sell or are you gonna do for the homeless uh, people? Give them for free, but we need the city to help. Perfect. So, come on. You can help the other people in the world, right? How about your own people? We are Canadian. Please. Get them a home. You have a second chance. Is it just me? Or does somebody else live inside of a bicycle? In my bike. Got a desk. Got a microwave, power, got a bed, storage underneath the bed, little toilet. 
Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm the creator of Tiny Tiny Homes. I want to make this video just to address the reasons behind why I built this. Uh, we have a problem in Toronto with the encampments and uh, homelessness. I built this as an alternative to people living in tents. Uh, last week when we had the flood, I couldn't imagine my whole life getting washed out and getting everything wet. And I want to build people a safe and secure environment where they can sleep. Something that has power uh, where they can charge their phones and get calls from doctors and make appointments. Something where they can lock the door and feel safe and they can lock their door and go to appointments so they can get better. Uh, if you'd like to know more, please go to my website, tinytinyhomes.ca and check out for more information. Thank you. Now, of course, I can't fault the gentleman who's helping with these tiny, tiny homes. He is doing something incredible and I will tip my hat to him any day of the week. What I'm going to say is that there should be no reason for what he's doing to happen. There should be no reason for this initiative to exist. Thank heavens, guys like him are around, but it shouldn't be guys like him cleaning up Trudeau's mess. This is absolutely disgusting that this is the point that we're at where kind-hearted citizens are the ones who are stepping up and carrying out the work that should be designated for the government. This is absolutely ridiculous. But all the same, I just want to say I'm thankful that kind-hearted individuals like him are around and I applaud him for his work. It really is priceless to see how he makes people feel when he delivers them their homes. So speaking of problems that Trudeau and his government have created, let's switch over to immigration. This video was unearthed by Sammy Canada on Twitter. Time, 24 hours till the time the students don't get their fair assessment till the time the students don't get their fair results. If people think the students have copied or the students are not studying, come here. The students have all the probes. You are all you all are welcome to come and ask them question in English, Gujarati, Hindi, Punjabi, any language. So sir, please come, please don't be sit at home and don't assume like this university and don't do the same thing. The students need your support because it's not just the thing about the students. We, you, you all are aware that international, we all immigrants are getting exploited by these people, right? So you all have to be united because today you can run from this thing. You can ignore this thing, but tomorrow what will happen when it will, the same thing will happen to you. And it will happen if you will not raise your voice, you all will be victim or one or other thing. So I will suggest you come here, stand with the students, get united and, and create some union that we believe that if we have, just imagine that if we have thousand people of group and when, five, even if 500 are active, even if 500 people are active from that and we got news that the students are get are go, are getting scammed today so in in the in from those 500 even if 250 are coming don't you think if 250 will stand at university you can get your justice in a day so you all have to get united sir so this is my humble request. This is very telling. It is so telling of the mindset of some of the fake international students that are coming into Canada. As you can see in this video, there is 0% intention of integrating with the population. There is absolutely no intent to study. It was never about that to begin with. This is all about establishing a new home. And that, of course, is a big problem. And the fact that this video is out in public where someone like Mark Mark Miller can see it and he still can't recognize the problem that we have. It goes to show we desperately need this early election and Pierre Polyev really has to play every card correct to make this happen. This brings us to a slightly more lighthearted video of the same subject. I say lighthearted because when you watch it, you'll see where this could have all gone horribly wrong, but it all just goes to show the people you'll see in this video, they're getting into Canada and they will bring this to Canada. This is not good. We don't need this. Let's take a look.
And I want to leave you guys off on a funny note because let's face it, <laughs> things are feeling kind of dire right now. What you're about to see from what I've gathered, no one was hurt. So it's okay to have a good chuckle. The host in this video is hilarious. Really honestly don't know if he's trying to be serious or if he's actually the way he is in the video. Either which way, I hope it makes you laugh. Thank you very much right, for watching Star and Wars please Wars. subscribe if you haven't done so happened? already. I'll catch this you in the next one. Over. Look at this, bro. Motherfuckers don't know how to drive, bro. I don't know what happened to the driver. We're, out of my scene. we're journalists. I, I don't care if you're a journalist or not. What you get arrested? For what? Side, hey, it, hey, I know jujitsu, bro. Okay. Don't get into the scene. What happened? Why is he putting hands on me? You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a boxer. Can you stand on the sidewalk? So okay. What happened? It was an accident. Is anyone uh, dead? There's nobody dead. Anyone see the accident? Hi, John, what happened? I didn't see anything, bro. Nothing? Nothing? Brother, what happened? I was just fucking minding my own business. I was trying to, you know, cross the street. Look at that guy over there. Look. He, look at this, bro. This guy was just on his phone. Gentlemen, 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 police officer going to talk here. You gentlemen are more than welcome to film. If you interfere with what we are doing here, you will be arrested. Stay away from the involved parties. You can film as much as you want. Is that understand? You're a tall guy, bro. You you're, you're like That's seven footer. Walk away. I'm standing. I'm not doing anything wrong. Come on, I'm a journalist. I'm just minding my own business. I was trying to cross the street. Okay. All of a sudden, this guy comes like a bat out of hell. Skin, uh, what's the person? I don't want to say his skin color, but he was from India. He was brown. Comes out like a bat out of hell. He sees me, swerves. The car somehow fucking flips. I'm just standing there smoking my cigar, chilling. And then you see the results. How about you, witness? What'd you see, uh, uncle? No, I know, come what happened? I see a car there. No one in Scarborough knows how to drive. Uh, what happened? I don't know, buddy. Snitches get stitches. Stay safe, bro. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit threeoceans.ca. Once again, that's threeoceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.